It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood. Oh, wait, wait, sorry. Wrong intro. Hey, everybody. Steel Target Paint Podcast. Jeff Jones, Steve Foster. How you doing, Steve? Good, Jeff. How are you? You been uh, drinking tonight or what's going on? <laughs> just just water. Just water. Uh, just, you know, uh, th th there's a new, there is that new movie out, though. Uh, Tom Hanks is playing uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. I saw a preview of it, and it looks pretty good. Uh, I saw a documentary on him. It was quite amazing, so. I want to give a little shout out to Mr. Rogers. I grew up with him. All right, Jeff, you and I live in two completely different worlds because I saw the new <laughs> Joker movie coming out, and that's what I plan to go see. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much the other end of the spectrum, and I plan on seeing that as well. So, hey, you been doing much shooting lately? Yeah, Jeff, uh, really cool and exciting things going on at our, our local gun club at, in Griffin, Georgia. We had our annual cancer awareness um, for breast cancer. Charity match this past weekend. The final numbers are not in yet, but I would guess we're probably in that three to thirty-five hundred dollar range. So that was great, and I don't know, it was just kind of relaxing. And I shot my best six-stage match I've ever shot with any division since I've been shooting steel challenge. So it was uh, it was pretty cool. How about you? You been shooting lately? Yeah, you know, we went over to Frostproof and um, uh, was trying to squeeze out. Uh, I needed just under two seconds to make A and limited and. And I got, I got one second, just a little over one second on showdown, but uh, couldn't squeeze out the other stuff. Uh, and then shot PCC, getting ready for Area 6 and the uh, uh, state match down here in Florida. And uh, shot a personal best for me of 11.1 uh, on outer limits of all stages. So I was, oh, good for you. I was very pleased with that. I, I, I actually enjoy that stage. I, I, I love the challenge of that stage. So... Well, you know, Steve, um, I don't know if you're an old Saturday Night Live aficionado, but, you know, there were guests that, that seems to constantly reappear on that show. Uh, Steve Martin was one of them, and, uh, and there was an old one. Buck Henry was on that show a lot. Well, you know what? Um, we've now got a five-time uh, guest on the show. Uh, everybody, welcome back. Current re-elected USPSA president, Mike Foley. Mike, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, and hello, neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded more creepy than probably what he intended. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens to me from time to time, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, Mike, you're, you're back from uh, the Nationals out in Utah. Why don't you give us uh, a, a quick recap on, uh, on your feelings as the president and how that went? We had a spectacular uh, time in Utah. We had uh, 410 competitors complete the Open and PCC match. Uh, we did changeover, and then we had another 420 compete in the uh, limited and carry optics match. It was the largest turnout we've ever had for, for carry optics. Uh, it's really uh, come into its own this past year and will be the fourth largest division this year uh, behind the three powerhouse divisions of limited production and open. Uh, so that was no surprise. Uh, the, uh, the match was really uh, all about shooting. It was about, uh, it was about where to apply the throttle and where to apply the brakes and there were uh, some pretty straightforward stages on the ground, yet everyone talked at the end about how hard they were and about how much fun they had. And, and you know, for me as a match director, uh, and I know Shannon Smith feels the same way, uh, when someone says, hey, you know, that stage really kicked my butt and I loved it, that's how I know that, you, that, you know, that, that we've accomplished something. Uh, yep. Again, you know, the champions always rise to the top and everyone else falls down, you know, somewhere, you know, in their particular class bracket or what have you. But there was a little bit of everything. Uh, there was a memory stage uh, there that I bet I saw over 100 people looking at at any given time on either schedule trying to figure out where to shoot targets from. Uh, so that was, you know, that was very popular. Uh, we also had a, a stage with over a 20 um, hit factor. Uh, wow. which is unheard of, and uh, we were really happy with the way that turned out. But we had a good time. You know, it's the most beautiful place, Utah, 
we um, we really enjoy going there. And uh, while they're having some uh, range construction there, uh, I met with the county uh, out there and also with the tourism folks, and they're committed to building a world-class shooting facility on that site. Uh, that's going to take them a few months, so we have planned uh, around that for the 2020 and 2021 schedules, uh, but we hope to get back out there sometime and, and shoot on their new range on the same uh, site uh, in 2022 or 2023 and, and beyond. But uh, you really, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a solid nationals and a good time. And, uh, you know, as usual, it's great to see everyone from, you know, from all over the country and even a few international competitors uh, join us in, in each location, uh, regardless of, of, of where that may be. Awesome. Well, you know, kudos to uh, to Jake Markins, uh, Martins and Spanky and anyone else who may have grabbed the uh, the phone and done the live uh, Facebook casts of, of the stages. I probably watched, I tried to watch them all and went back and watched them when I didn't catch them live. But, uh, that was a fantastic uh, thing you guys did, uh, on social media, um, to really see those stages. And I saw, I saw that 20 hit fat. Well, I don't know if I saw it live, but I did see, I believe, uh, was it Max Lee and Grandis that, that hit a 20 hit factor on that stage? Right. Yeah, I you know, I, uh, you know that that work is all Michael Brooks. Uh, Michael Brooks, uh, as many of you know, uh, his nickname is Spanky. Uh, joined our team full time on the ninth day of September, just you know a week and a half before we had to you know be there on the ground with the Nationals. And uh, he was filling in for Jake. Uh, he's our assistant uh, director of media and events. And uh, Michael did a spectacular job in, in making all of that happen. And we're really excited to have him on our team. And those of you who've been to a Nationals or a World Speed Shooting Championship in the last three or four years have have seen Michael Brooks and have seen him as a part of our volunteer staff. And so we're really thrilled to, you know, to have him as, as part of our full-time staff. So I'll certainly pass that along and just kind of want to give him a shout-out, you know, and say welcome aboard. And, and uh, you know, we're looking for a lot of good things from him. Absolutely. Congratulations, Spanky. That's fantastic. I've worked with him a couple of times at the, at the World Speed Shoots and, uh, you know, just a class act and, uh, and gets the job done. So that's fantastic for the organization and for him as well. Yeah, it was pretty cool watching some of the Facebook Live stuff and, uh, you know, some of the stages. Man, my man Christian, he laid it down out there. Holy cow. I know he uh, did pretty well third or fourth place last year, and this year he took the Open title. And with the with the uh, the list of shooters, current and world champions that are on that list, that had to be uh, something special, Mike, to see, wasn't it? You know, it's it's very interesting. I I, I don't want to jinx him by uh, you know by by putting this out there, but Christian Saylor has won every area match this year so far, with only the area two championship yet to go. Uh, he has uh, handily, you know risen to the top at those matches and just won the open nationals and he's beating, you know, what I consider to be the best shooters in the world. Uh, JJ Ricasa, you know, is obviously no slouch oh, yeah. and, and, uh, you know, every, every time he shows up this year, he's winning the only person to ever win, uh, all eight area matches and a national championship in the open division in a, in a, in a year's time. Uh, was Max Michelle, and, and don't hold me to this, but I think that was in 2008 uh, when that happened last. So it's wow. been over a decade, and it's only been done one other time. So I wish Christian Saylor the absolute best of luck at, at, at Area 2. Um, and, again, not trying to jinx him, uh, I know we I know he can do it, and uh, he certainly put in the effort and worked hard to be there. You know what a nice guy, and and and, and his parents are, are are solid people, and we just you know really uh, enjoyed seeing him reach you know reach his goals this year. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, Mike, with the with the at the end of, of these nationals, and of course uh, we'll we'll touch on the low cap here in a minute. Um, uh, technically, the world shoot team uh, could be determined. Have you guys gone through and? Um, figure that out yet or is that still something to come uh for the uh i guess it would be for the open uh and limited and and carry optics teams uh allow me to speak to the process and then and then, yes, and then i'll that answer that fantastic. question a little bit yeah, you know, that, that's so great. 
the way that process works is after the last match um, for any division is over, which will be the single stack revolver match, the fourth in a series, and that one will be over the you know the first week of November. Uh, then we scrape the data and we apply the policy as it's written, and that's on our website if anybody wants to go out and look at it. But uh, we convert that you know to, to, to points and we start going through and all of the people who are interested in going who've accumulated enough points get offered slots and as we offer them slots we also offer the top four competitors uh, team positions uh, we'll have seven division teams this time uh, so so I can do the calculations in mid-November however those calculations are meaningless until January it's in January when we know how many slots we get for the world shoot Gotcha. While I can anticipate that we'll get around 50, which is what we got last year and the year before, um, I, you know, that's not certain. If I get 60, I send more people. If I get 40, we have to be a little bit more judicious in, in you know, in, in, in going through that data. But uh, assuming that everyone wants to go that earn points, uh, we'll have 28 people on the seven division teams, and then the remaining 22 or so people with that earned slots, we will form all of the category teams that we can. That would be senior teams, ladies teams, you know, in certain divisions, even a junior team if we have enough people who, you know, who've, who've earned those. Uh, but uh, there won't be an announcement on that until sometime in January after we received the slots and we started calling the points uh, winners from the top down and filtering them into the brackets, if you will. So, yes, the matches will be done in mid-November, and there are certainly, I've seen two or three spreadsheets that people are keeping. Uh, the open the open guys have been keeping their own, and I saw one earlier today. Matt Hopkins sent me one uh, for the carry optics point standings, and, and, and so certainly people are paying attention in, in, in all divisions, and certainly it's a very exciting time, uh, and I'm certain that, that the anticipation will just about kill some of them between mid-November and mid-January. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the timeline. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. I mean, you'd hate to, to you know, start offering slots and then not have a slot to offer. So uh, that makes perfect sense. Waiting to see what you've got to fill and then, and then start filling it out. And you know, it's it's quite an honor to have you know for anyone who is qualified for uh, being able to go. Um, the question I have is, um, do you, do you, I mean I know for me, you know. If I, if I were to ever make it, which I won't, but let's just say I did, you know, I'd figure out I'd sell my house to be able to go. Do you ever have people that have to go, gee, I can't go, I just don't have the funds or I don't have the time? Does that happen or do most people that end up earning a slot end up going? Uh, it's really uh, inconsistent as far as, 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 as the way that goes. Sometimes everyone down the line wants to go. There are always going to be people who are either A, not interested in the pursuit or it comes at a bad time for them, maybe a job change or a career, you know, their career is, is, is headed somewhere, you know, different than when they started the process or they are moving or maybe they're expecting a child or, or, or those kinds of things. So there are always things that can, can throw that off for individuals. Uh, for the most part, though, the people who've been focused on this goal and are, are, are winning the points uh, are, and, and are on the path we would like to go. I, I want to say that we typically, to field 50 slots, have to go about 80 deep on the okay. list. So there are sometimes people who just aren't interested or just can't go for whatever reason, um, and, and whether that's, uh, you know, financial or, 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 or timing or whatever, you know, uh, you, you never know. Uh, but one thing's for certain, when we go – to a world shoot and last time there were only five divisions there are seven now and you get um, three gold medals for individual performance and then you walk out of there with all those team medals for uh, teams and category teams and and, and and you walk away with you know a dozen or more medals they know that the US was there and uh, our counterparts all over the world uh, want the US to be there and they want to beat us, uh, but they want to beat us on our best day with our best people. And so we try really hard to field those teams with the best people uh, who've been on the three-year journey. And, and I have a lot of people inquire about this. I've, I've had questions this week of 
hey, I just found out about this. What do I have to do to get to go? And, and while it's always hard to disappoint people and say, well, you know, this has been a three-year journey and there have been roughly 100 people on it that are, that are interested, uh, and so you're late for this cycle, but the next cycle begins, uh, you know, after the 2020 world shoot in, in 2021, um, uh, I hope that's not terribly deflating, but it's how we know that we're sending not only the best athletes, but those who have some skin in the game, those who are committed to the process, committed to, to, to the expense, and committed to the training necessary to not only get there, but to win the matches to get there. So uh, it, is a, it is a three-year uh, cycle, and, and a lot of things can change in three years to answer your original question. Excellent. And, and my last question um, that I think you can help clear up for me, um, while this is a world shoot, there, there are lots that are earned. And, and of course, you've, you've talked about the process. If, you know, Fred Smith's got the money and the time, um, could he just say, I want to go and shoot it? And I wouldn't necessarily be shooting for the USA or being on a team, but I could just shoot it for my own purposes. Do they allow something like that? Everyone that I give a slot to is shooting for the USA. However, individuals can earn slots, and everyone actually earns their slot as an individual, and then we form teams from those slot earners. So if Fred Smith wants to go, he has to shoot enough points in three out of the four qualifiers to be in that top 80 or so people. Okay. So, so yeah, so, person, so, a, yeah a we, we, don't, just... we don't award any any other way. There are no right. randoms. No, but what my, my question was is that if, you know, just throw out a number, if the match costs $400, it's not like a match I can just go sign up, pay my fee, and shoot it. You have to have earned a berth for any of the nations that are shooting in it. That's correct. Okay, thank you for that. Hey, Mike, there's some exciting stuff going on on Steel Challenge right now. Do you see that uh, young gun Chris Barrett broke the 60-second mark in a major match? Yeah, 59 and change. Uh, was what, what match was that at, Steve? It was at the 2019 Alabama State Steel Challenge Championship. Held right there in Talladega where we have the World Speed Shooting Championship. It's crazy. And you know what, Mike? I set a personal best in PCC and Rimfire Rifle Open, and then Chris just had, had to unleash on me. What, what kind of teammate is that? <laughs> yeah, you know that's that's just insensitive at best. To, you know, to, to, you know, to shoot a world record time and shadow your accomplishments. <laughs> I know, right? So uh, it, it's been very interesting, even in just in the last twelve months, how fast some of these uh, some of these folks are getting. I mean, you know, we've talked about it on the podcast before. It wasn't that long ago when people were breaking, you know, into the into the high sixties. Everybody was oohing on and. And this year, you know, if you're not in that 64, 65 range, you're not going to be on the top of the podium. So uh, absolutely correct. All right. So it's about that time of year again, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. So here, here, here comes the bad news over happy music, right? For some people. <laughs> uh, hang on, cue the music. Hang on. Uh, okay, I'll edit that in later. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> So, yes, uh, it is time. Uh, Jeff and Zach and I have uh, reviewed the PSTs, uh, the peak stage times uh, that the uh, classification system is based off of uh, that takes into account not only world records but the top ten performances over a period of time. And uh, certainly we knew they wouldn't be going down. Uh, in uh, definitely the PCC divisions and the rimfire rifle divisions because they're getting faster and faster and faster. Uh, the good news is is that we're still committed to not raising them at such a level that people can't keep up. Um, so uh, with that said, uh, I'll move right into it. Uh, PCCI is going to get uh, a three-second total change it's going to get a half second each on five to go, showdown, smoke and hope, uh, pendulum, and a one second on roundabout. It's going to move from 83 to 80. That's only a 3.6% change. And as you know, three seconds across 39 runs is hundreds of a second on each run 
So it's not a dramatic change. It's not one that people can't keep up with, especially if they're working hard to reach those goals. Uh, PCCO, much the same. It's going to get a four-second total change. It's going to go from 74 to 70. It's going to get a full second on five to go and showdown, a quarter second on accelerator, three quarters on pendulum, a half on speed option, another half on roundabout. And uh, that's a 5.4% change. Um, rimfire Mike, let's rifle hold, let's open. Hold there, let's hold there for a second. I want to I want to uh, bring up something that uh, everybody may not have heard, and that is uh, something that um, uh, we decided, and and uh, we all said that this is the way to go to really get these times better suited to where they need to be, and that is instituting the now quarter second interval. Um, and so when you look at uh, uh, you know you pointed out for for PCCO. Uh, accelerator we're only moving by one quarter of a second um, instead of and we're, we're, we're um, shying not shying away but we're not limiting ourselves to just staying at half seconds and um, you know that's even you know again as you mentioned over 39 runs well in this case it would be it would be uh, uh, four runs at a quarter of a second um, you know it's uh, it's still within the in, in the realm as long as you pointed out people are working towards you know uh, working at it. Um, it's it's but, six hundreds per string. There you go. So so it's practically immeasurable at the at, at that decimal point. Yep. So six hundred six hundreds per string is, is is really minimal when we start talking about a quarter second movement. Even when you're talking about a full second movement, you know you're only talking now. Uh, about quarter seconds uh, per string. And, and, and so when you start breaking down the elements of what it takes to be successful in Steel Challenge, you know, a 3.6 or 5.4% uh, change in the PCCI and PCCO divisions, which are still very young, you know, they're only in their fourth year, um, the, you know, those kinds of changes are, are to be expected. What we hope is in, at a point in the future that uh, the – Peak stage time stop outrunning uh, the adjustments, and it settles down, and there's little to no adjustment, you know, for some periods of time. And and we've seen that in more mature classification systems like the USPSA classification system. Uh, it's rare to get single digit uh, percentage swings uh, year to year anymore uh, in 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 any of the USPSA classifiers. But when they're new, they're always going to see a, you know, a, a marginal shift until that settles out. And uh, the, the, the challenge is, and, and, and Jeff, you know this well because we struggled with this uh, this yep. year. <laughs> the, the, the challenge is to adjust the PST in a way that we can achieve a balance between creating falsely high classifications, i.e. we don't want everyone to be a GM, and still adjust them such that we don't disenfranchise competitors who might think that they're too aggressive. And so, you know, we've got everybody in mind, and, and, and I know that when you sent me the initial data, I, I applied it to several matches, and I looked at how it affected C class, which is the largest classification or B, which is the second largest classification. And to be frank, it didn't move most competitors. The competitors at the tops of those classes would have to work a little harder, but guess what? They're on their way out and working harder anyway. Yep. So uh, it, it's not dramatic. And so when we start talking about you know, these adjustments, and, and there's, a, there's a press release that's going to accompany uh, the release of this podcast um, that will show you what those changes are, the data suggested changes up to about 12%. Uh, the largest change we made was RFRI, which was only 6.9%, or five and a half seconds. Um, the good news about PCCI and RFRI is, is that we're changing them early. There are not thousands of people classified in those divisions. Um, right. So it, 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 it's a good time to get ahead of the curve. Uh, again, though, we're not really ahead of the curve. We're still slightly behind it hoping that we don't have to make major adjustments in the coming years. And, 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 and so our goal is, again, to balance the, the right number of grandmasters and the right number of people throughout the class distribution, but to also balance uh, the scores in such a way 
that you're not just competing against the best person out there, you're competing against 95% of their score when averaged with the other nine best people out there. Does that make any sense? <laughs> it does to me because we struggled with it and then finally came to the came to that realization. So, yes, it, it works for me. <laughs> well, that, right. I, well, know you know, we, I was just going to say, I, I know we haven't gone through the rest of the divisions here, but I think uh, high level just looking at the top – you know, uh, four divisions, which are all rifle, which are near and dear to my heart. I think every single adjustment's more than appropriate. And I think that, you know, what I mentioned earlier about Chris and myself and a couple other people, the rifle times are just getting faster and faster and faster. And so it'll be interesting to see when we have the same conversation 12 months from now is, you know, has anybody else broke the 60 second barrier and and are the top matches, you know, people shooting in the low 60s instead of the mid 60s? And you know, 12 months ago, if you shot a 65, everybody's like, "Oh man, did you see what blah 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 did?" Now it's kind of like, "Yeah, okay." There's a couple people out there doing that now. And 12 months from now, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I, my prediction is there's a handful of the top five or so um, rifle shooters, as an example, in the country are going to be fighting it out who's shooting a 61, 62, or 63 in the next 12 months. So I think these adjustments are, are right on point. I, I would totally agree with that, you know, and, you know, not leaving the rimfire rifle divisions out. Uh, obviously, rimfire rifle irons is going to get a second on five to go, showdown uh, and pendulum, and then slightly less on the other stages. It was the most aggressively changed division. Uh, RFRO is only getting a second on one uh, on one stage, and that's five to go. So, if, you know, RFRI is going down from 79.50 to uh, 74, and RFRO is going from 72 to 68. And, you know, as you said, I, I can remember when 68 was a world-class score, and now 68 is a second a stage behind a world-class score. Yep. So uh, this happens, and, and, and certainly it gives me and, and, I, and I think everyone else uh, something to shoot for in that I want to keep my classifications uh, relevant, and I want to work harder to continue to improve. And across each year, if I improve, you know, a second here, a quarter second there, uh, you know, it stands to reason that I could still continue to do that, and, and, and I think everyone else falls into that. And, and, and the, the farther down the class list you are, the less impact this is going to have, uh, unless, again, you're at the top of your class. Now, we do have some divisions that are going to get easier, uh, per se. Uh, Iron Sight Revolver is going to get a full second easier. It's going to get uh, three-quarters of a second easier on outer limits and a quarter second on pendulum. And then uh, optic sight revolver and single stack are neither getting easier or harder overall, but they're being rebalanced such that we're taking three quarters of a second off one stage and distributing it a quarter of a second on, on other stages. Their PSTs didn't change for, for the total, but the uh, data suggests that some of the stages are moving uh, more rapidly uh, toward faster times and others are kind of, you know, starting to balance out. And I like that because that tells me that we're reaching that maturity point or we're reaching that saturation where the changes in the shifts are not going to be so much uh, as they are in the rifle divisions. And, Mike, I think you hit it right on the head, and it's something that we looked at the data when we were looking at this. And, you know, we all ask, you know, why are the rifles changing so much? And, and it really came down to the, you know, the, the, the point you made is that a lot of people are shooting the rifles and they're still new. And so, you know, when, they, when we started, uh, when, 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 the, when those started, you know, the, I, I'm guessing they were close to what the open times were, uh, very similar to the USPSA. There are definitely stages um, where, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the rifles are just, you know, far and away uh, an easier gun to shoot. Um, and, of course, against a draw gun, but, I mean, even, you know, Mac, what is Max's record on Smoke and Hope? Like seven and a half seconds, maybe less, uh, with a centerfire open gun? I mean, people would kill for that shooting PCC. <laughs> and and he's, he did it with right. a draw. 
you know so it's, right. it's so, really so yeah that's that's an interesting that's an interesting point but let, let's explore that for a second i would like to know what you jeff and you steve think about the stages which stage do you think is faster with a rifle or which stage do you think is, is faster with a handgun because I have some theories about this, and, and obviously having looked at the data, uh, I may be a little more, more informed than, than the average person, and, and, and you guys certainly have both seen it, but do you, have, do you have particular stages that you think, you know, smoke and hope, that's definitely a pistol stage, but, you know, outer limits is easier for me with a rifle. How, how does that work for you guys? I would say, you know, for me, uh, those are the same. I think, you know, it, it varies when you've got, you know, the, the stages that have the wider swings. I actually, um, I love accelerator as a stage. Um, and, um, I personally, uh, shoot it about the same with a pistol and a rifle. Um, and, and, and part of that is, 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 is just the way, I, you know, the, the, the way I've practiced it. And of course I shot, I started out shooting, nothing but rimfire pistol for over a year before I shot any of the other guns. Um, center fire, I'm still working on it, but, um, you know, that's, that's one of them. Steve, what about you? Mike, I think it's a great, great question. I would say that, you know, in terms of a pistol stage, I, I will admit that I'm not nearly as good of, uh, whether it's center fire, let's talk about rimfire, because that's what I spend more of my, my time in, at least for now is uh, I'm not as good of a pistol shooter as I am a rifle shooter. But I will say, though, that I can throw down strings on, on Smoke and Hope that, that are extremely competitive, not slightly better at times than, than, my, than my rifles. It's, it's just I think that a rifle overall is, is a lot easier to shoot it well just because you have a different level of stability, and there's a couple quick tips and tricks you can get into a rifle where it's, uh, you know, it's, it's not moving around any other way that my pistol tends to because I'm not as good of a, a, a pistol shooter. But I, I think that any stage to just point that you have those wide, super wide transitions, I think I could move a handgun just about as quick as my rifle. But other stages, showdown's a good one, that I could shoot showdown, showdown so much faster with a rifle than I than I can with a pistol because it's a very short transition, although the targets are a little bit farther away and all that kind of stuff, but it's got the, the, the smallest transition of any steel challenge stage. So it, it's, I think it's interesting. I know that we had Shannon Smith on the podcast and we were talking after the podcast one night about, hey, Shannon, do you think I should shoot more pistols or more rifles? And he's, he's like, you know what? Hey, what, what do you want your game to be? You want to be one of the best people in the world shooting a rifle, then continue to do that because if you end up shooting too many pistols and, you, you know, what can you really focus on if you're shooting 12 different guns? And I said, man, I only shoot six, and he laughed. But, yeah, I, I think that some stages do favor a pistol because you can swing a, a pistol just a little bit quicker than most rifles. You, you know, I think, I think that's a valid point. I, I, you know, you're talking about showdown. Showdown is one of those stages where I think the first shot with a rifle is likely the easiest to, you know, whether you're on the left side or the right side, two of the easiest shots in all of steel challenge. It, it seems to me that the first shot with a rifle there is always faster. And maybe that's just my perception. And, 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 and certainly I'm not at the top of the, at the absolute top of the game, though I have managed to squeak out some GM classifications in all the low ready divisions. Um, I, I have to think that, 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 that I'm faster on that with a rifle, but I think the transition is a little faster with a pistol. So I think there's a trade right. there. And I think it goes back to what I was saying about the USPSA nationals earlier. And it's sometimes the throttle, uh, needs to be applied. And sometimes the brake needs to be applied. So sometimes you're more focused on getting that fast first shot and, and accurate and, and a quick follow up. And other times, the, the, the transitions mean more, and, and, and the math balances itself out in a way that it may not be noticeable if we don't break those elements down one shot at a time. And that's hard to do in a match, uh, but certainly I know that uh, people over the years who've been good at Steel Challenge, and this, goes way, this, will, this will date me a little bit, I can remember people taking a notebook uh, to the range and setting up roundabout and shooting the first two plates and trying to decide if you change the order of the first two, how does it change the total? 
and reviewing every single shot on the timer and, and, and mapping that out. And a lot of the ways that we shoot these stages today that we've inherited from people who are uh, accomplished at this, at this sport traditionally come from them doing that research. We don't know it. We just do monkey see, monkey do. We shoot it the way Max <laughs> does, or you know, we shoot it the way Cole does. But 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 a lot of that's already been done. That work's been done way ahead. Um, and so uh, I, I think that those that those elements are interesting. And if any of us were ever lucky enough to, to, to be able to just shoot Steel Challenge every day of our lives, we could probably map out some things that could help us improve that we're never going to notice. Um, otherwise well yeah you know i want to you know, point one other thing too out mike and i think it tends to be with what you're what you're focused on you know steve is definitely one of the top competitors in the rifle divisions and that he stays focused on that and, and, and chris barrett's the same way you go back to last year's world shoot and 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 kc who is a center fire pistol shooter but he shot a he shot in the low 60s in rimfire pistol open i mean he came close to being the first one last year uh, and Chris did it with, with the rifle this year. Um, so, uh, again, if you were to go to KC and say, you know, which one it is, he's probably going to say pistol because, again, he's more focused on pistols his entire life. So I think, I think it also is based on, um, you know, where your focus is uh, as, as to what, what gun may be you're more comfortable with, and that's just because you've been practicing more with it. That does make sense. So there, there's some divisions that we haven't talked about, Mike. Carry optics, rimfire pistol iron, rimfire pistol open, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a, a limited in production and, and whatnot. Maybe I've just missed one. So what's going on with those divisions? No changes? The remaining six divisions that aren't mentioned in this press release, that aren't mentioned on this uh, spreadsheet that's attached, uh, will not be getting changes. So open, limited, no change. Carry optics, production, no change. Um, rimfire pistol irons, rimfire pistol open, no change. Yeah, I remember last year we, um, I think I think limited, limited was one of those stages that got like a four second change. It was like a half second on every stage. And uh, I, th I think we, we, we did nail that one last year. Um, and of course, again, every year it's going to be reviewed. Uh, and, and we'll, we'll make, you know, the data doesn't lie. Uh, that's the nice thing about it. Um, the, the data tells the, 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 the story, uh, of, about whether or not the, the stages really need to change. It does. There, there, there's, there's no question. We're not making guesses here. Uh, we're taking actual data, uh, and trying to apply it in a way, uh, that allows for some gradual improvement, gradual transition and gradual adjustment. And this year we had to be a little less gradual uh, because of the uh, the new uh, you know the new times that are being shot over and over and over again. Uh, that will eventually settle, though. Uh, if you want to give some people nightmares, since we just told people for six divisions that nothing's going to change, if you want to give some, if you want to give some people nightmares, Jeff, you and I got a whiteboard out at the World Speed Shooting Championship <laughs> while everyone was going through the prize table. Yep. And we figured we figured out that if anyone ever took the absolute best of the best of the best, because even when people shoot a solid, you know, 59 in the case of, 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 of young Master Barrett, uh, or they shoot a, you know, a, a solid 60 run, not every string was the best they could do. And if you take people's best strings and you farm that out over, over all, uh, four runs on all eight stages. I think you and I figured that you can probably get to about a 48 pretty easily. Well, yeah. that's a that's that's a perfect match. Nobody nobody has ever done it, and I don't think anyone will do it anytime soon. Uh, but we're getting into the high 50s, and I think we'll be in the low 50s at some point. Uh, I hope it's in my lifetime because I, I definitely want to see it. The potential's there. I mean, people are taking, I mean, it's, it's not, I'm not going to say that uh, shooters didn't take the sport seriously before because they absolutely did, but we definitely, you know, the, the growth of the sport, you know, kudos to you and the team and Zach for, for really, you know, 
being there, helping the sport grow, uh, is what's doing it. Um, you know, uh, year after year, breaking records as far as the number of guns at the world shoots. Um, and, you know, this coming year in, in 2020, uh, the potential is there again because you've opened up another half day. Uh, of shooting. Right. We're, we're going to get 700 guns this year. Uh, I, I won't accept any less. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, if, if we have six, you know, if we have 699 guns, sorry, folks, parks closed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're, 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 we're going to, uh, we're going to do everything we can to, to accommodate, uh, all of the people that, 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 that want to do this. Uh, we're eventually going to run out of space and time and, and the only way that you can add people to a practical shooting match, this is something that everybody should lean in and listen really hard about, is to add more days or more bays. Yeah. Okay? So we're almost at capacity, and I think 700 and change is going to be the capacity for this event at its current location. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we won't find a way to make that work out in the future. If if we we start turning away you know, hundreds of people each time. And we do turn away a hundred or more people each time. But if we start turning away hundreds of people or a thousand people, uh, then we may have to look at doing with Steel Challenge what we've done with uh, USPSA, and that is we may have to offer certain schedules for certain divisions at certain times. Now, we're not there yet, and I'm not saying that that's imminent. You know, I don't want everybody to start emailing me tomorrow telling me what a terrible idea this is. But, 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 but you can't get more people in a match without more days and more bays. Our goal has been to create more Tier 3 matches. And uh, the Area 2 uh, Steel Challenge Championship uh, in California this year was an example of one that started last year. It's happened again this year. They already have it. Uh, I think someone's working on it for next year. So that's a new tradition. Uh, the, uh, there are other areas following suit. I was on the phone yesterday with someone trying to work out an area one, uh, steel challenge championship. So, uh, eventually we'll have steel challenge championships, uh, at least in the eight segments of the country that, uh, that we measure by USBSA standards. Uh, but, uh, I would like to see, uh, a lot more tier, tier two and tier three matches because, you know, maybe you can't make the Nationals, but maybe you can make, you know, the U.S. Steel Shoot, or maybe you can make the East Coast Steel Challenge Championship, or maybe you can make the Area 2 or the Area 6, or next year the Area 1. You know, we had one in Area 5 last year I, I uh, really enjoyed uh, up, up in Indiana. Uh, I'm going uh, this coming weekend to the Kentucky State Steel Challenge Championship. Uh, that match is now in its third year. So, uh, you know, there, there's definitely room to add more matches, even if we can't get more people into, into the World Speed Shooting Championship. Uh, something you talked about, Jeff, that's near and dear to my heart is growth. Uh, I'm looking at my daily uh, activity number for Steel Challenge right now uh, through um, uh, about 5 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we've had 56,473 activities in Steel Challenge year to date. Wow. That's Wow. That's that's a couple thousand more than all year last year. In fact, at the same time last year, we were at 45,156. That is a net of 15,317 15, more activities year to date than we had at the same time last year. It's almost another third with the last quarter yet to go. Wow. And, you know, I mean, Steve and I are competing at Area 6. Um, you said Kentucky State's coming up. Florida State's coming up. Uh, I just saw something on Facebook. I think Wisconsin's having a state match. Um, and there was another one out there. Um, I know Mississippi just happened. I mean, a couple of years ago, you can go back, you know, go onto the Steel Challenge website, go back and look at the history. You go back five years, there weren't maybe – two or three state championships and a couple of other level twos. And, you know, we host a level two down at the WAC, the West Florida Steel Challenge Championships. Um, Griffin has a level two, uh, you know, Georgia, Georgia State. I mean, there's just – it's just – the growth is amazing. And, and, and there, people are showing up to these matches too. It's not like you're, you know, having a match and you got 40 people there. There's, you know, 100-plus guns in all of these and sometimes even more. 
And, and you know the right. other the the other crazy part is you know Griffin's had a pretty solid presence at Steel Challenge for a while. I don't know. It's probably one of the, if not the largest, monthly steel challenge match in the country. They're running about 150 to 160 guns. And, you know, my buddy Ben out in Kansas, he just posted out on Facebook earlier today that his uh, club that's in Mill Creek, Kansas, not sure where the heck that is. Love you, Ben. But they had, I mean, he, they just started up the steel challenge match. I don't know if it's six months ago or 12 months ago. He had 131 guns this weekend, so it's really, it's just catching on all over the country, which is really exciting. It's catching on all over the country, and every day more and more international inquiries about Steel Challenge. Uh, you know, one of the other statistics, and this one comes by way of Zach Jones, uh, we benchmarked on July the 13th, uh, 2016, the classifications when we updated the classification system. We had 3,619 at that time. That's how many guns were classified in, in, you know, across all the divisions, across all the competitors shooting. Uh, today, we have 20,411. Holy uh, that is a That is a 464% growth in three years and three months. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Hey, Jeff, you know what that makes me think of? I do, but I'm going to let you say it because I was going to say it, but I'm going to give you the chance, so go for it. All right, Mike, this is a great opportunity to talk about uh, Steel Target Paint and their new auto delivery program. So if you're forgetful like me, go to rainstore.net, sign up for your uh, auto delivery of paint. You get 5% off and free shipping. Look at that, Mike. We just sold a bunch of paint. Thanks, that is That is amazing. You know, that's, that's one of those things that uh, – the product obviously speaks for itself. If you put it in somebody's hand and show them how to use it, uh, and more and more matches that I go to have figured it out. Uh, I'm seeing steel target paint show up in, 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 in all corners of this country in, in steel challenge, but also in USPSA. Uh, and uh, really makes me happy because uh, I like to go down range and reset. It gets us through the day faster. And, and I picked up a lot of, you know, we're using it at the USPSA nationals. They're the official uh, supplier of, 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 of steel target paint for the USPSA Nationals as well as the World Speed Shooting Championship and always looking for ways to make it easier to serve matches at all levels. Uh, you know, great company, great product. I can't say enough good things about it, and, and I'm not a, uh, a paid uh, spokesperson. I'm not connected with the company in any way. I'm just a real fan of uh, the product and the service. And, you know, when you want to talk about considerate, even those towels will help you get it off your paint if you make them, get it off your hands if you make a mess with <laughs> the paint, you know. The knuckle yeah, towels are golden. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of other products. I, I, I have knuckle towels and the, uh, the lens wipes that are part of my range bag set up uh, because, I mean, it's, they're just invaluable. Uh, and, I don't. And I don't use lens wipes. I take my lenses directly over to Brian Conley at his booth, <laughs> and Brian wipes my glasses off. In fact, I don't think <laughs> between. I just count on at least every other week. I'm going to see Brian at a match. He's the hardest working <laughs> vendor in all the shooting sports. When I go to the Hunter's HD uh, Gold booth, Brian cleans my glasses. So, you know, I would use more lens wipes, but I have Brian. So. That's great. Hey, Mike, Mike, great. Mike, you want to hear a secret? Hopefully Brian's not going to listen to this one. Actually, he, I think he listens to all of them. So we're, we're at a match, and, you know, this started back when this whole Z-Clear thing came out. I'm like, wow, what's that? And so he put some on my glasses. I was shooting. I think it was in Mississippi. It is humid as heck in Mississippi. And, uh, you know, I think about after the 12th time I walked over to Brian and started a match, like, man, I'm not sure if I got enough Z-Clear on here. Can you put some more on there? Uh, <laughs> Brian looked at me, Steve, this is like two weeks ago I saw you and I put Zekler on these same lenses. That's, well, they just need to tighten it up a little bit, Brian. I appreciate that. That's Classic. amazing. Classic. You, you know, uh, just, this, just this past week I received my first custom set. Now, I've been wearing uh, Velocities uh, and I've been wearing Calibers before that. And those are two fine frames that, that, that Brian has. And he just released that, that BJ Norris uh, uh, signature uh, frame and glass, which is, which is awesome. But I just got my first custom set. Uh, Ray-Ban, of all people, has a brand-new Wayfair that's like 54 or 55 millimeters. 
And those of you who know me know that I have a rather large cranium. And those frames fit me really well. And Brian put a, a set of his lenses in them. Uh, and I actually uh, shot them uh, casually on the range on Friday and through two days of a training class on Saturday and Sunday. And they are, are, are just flat amazing. Uh, now, they're dirty, and he's going to need to clean them, and it may be a month <laughs> before I see him, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe, I, maybe I'll have to get through it. You know, I, I found the best way to get him to clean your glasses is try to wipe them with your shirt. He'll take them away from you quickly, and, and you know, so I hope you're listening out there, buddy. Uh, yeah, he's, he's one of our top listeners, so he, I'm sure he's laughing right now. <laughs> Well, fantastic, Mike. Again, we really appreciate you being on the, the podcast. Uh, always a pleasure talking with you, getting the information out to the, uh, the shooting community. And um, thank you for your support. Oh, outstanding. I really, really like coming on here. Hopefully I can uh, continue to be your, your Steve Martin or Chevy Chase or whatever. You <laughs> continue to have me on when we have things to say. But I uh, uh, really do uh, appreciate everything you guys are doing on this show and uh, – beyond and look forward to seeing you both on the range soon all right thanks all right. Again, hey, i appreciate it hey steve one last thing give them that give them that uh, discount code yeah absolutely if you need any supplies go to rangestore.net and use discount code st podcast 10 for 10 percent off thanks everybody have a good night